would not be minutes uh, maintained. Uh, certainly, the public is invited to every meeting of the board, workshop, special meeting, otherwise. So uh, that's that's your opportunity to hear what is being presented about the budget, uh, but it would not necessarily reflect in the minutes. So you, so are there minutes taken? They're just not put into the the website then. There, there are no there are no minutes of um, what is being discussed. There could be no action. There's no votes at budget workshops. The only votes are at public board meetings. So when you have that consensus vote that I witnessed, could you just explain what that was for me? That's merely a consensus to see the board's feelings on what they feel about that item. The particular, as, as I discussed at the last budget workshop meeting, the particular items that are in the budget or out of the budget at that time can change up until the Board of Education adopts by resolution at a formal board meeting an actual number for an adopted budget. At that time, with that number, then it will be set what is included in that budget and what is not included in that budget. Up until that time, it is merely discussion and asking for an opinion of where the board stands on whether they would like to include that in the final adopted budget number. Okay. So, since now I know what why those things aren't printed in the minutes then, what I'm asking for is that when you do make your decision, and since those things don't get into the minutes, what I'm asking is that whenever you are going to make your decision on different things that you were discussing at those the March 5th meeting and March 22nd meeting, where you discuss eliminating the different athletic teams, which I think it is a good idea that you do. do I mean, you, you, it is good that you decide to cut down on the the price that you are spending, because you are in a time of need right now. Um, but I think that you should use some fairness in it, and that you just don't eliminate that three Mr. of them. That, Mr. Kennedy, is not an agenda item, so you need to discuss that. But they were, they were things that were discussed, and they were part of the three meetings that were taken on place on March 5th and March 22nd, which are on the agenda. There are not budget workshop minutes to be, they were special meetings that are in here for adoption. So those are not budget workshop meeting minutes that are being approved. Those are special meetings of the board that had particular items that were approved by resolution at a formal meeting. Those are not the budget workshops. So they were only the small little meeting that you had prior to the budget workshop meeting? Correct. That's correct. So where were you uh, voted to approve the new principal? Correct. Well, I, I commend you on uh, approving that new principal. I think she's a wise choice. And uh, I think that I can't wait to uh, have that new principal. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Yes. 
resolution B to amend and extend an existing agreement with CSR to provide expanded construction administration services for the completion of the renovation projects of HOH and New Bird Free. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Resolution C to amend and extend an existing agreement with New Architecture, DLLC, to provide expanded construction administration services to the completion of the renovation projects at Dales Gate and Gardner Town Elementary School. Motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Resolution D to amend and extend an existing agreement with Samuel Architecture, PPLC, to provide expanded construction administration services related to the conversion renovations. Superintendent of Finance. Yeah, 
First item is a resolution to authorize payment of property tax refunds as a result of four orders in the amount of $47,273.59.
Prior to making your comments, please state your name and address for the record. Identify any group or organization that you may be here representing. Comments are limited to five minutes or less per speaker so that everyone who wants to speak can possibly have an opportunity to do so. Beginning this evening, we have the timekeeper for this purpose. If you're unable to finish your remarks during the five minute time frame, you can supplement them by submitting a written statement to the district clerk. We will be uh, taking the board, the board clerk has been dating and time stamping the requests as they have come in, so I have a list in order. I have agreed to extend the time for public comment on non-agenda items to one hour by adding the 30 minutes for agenda items to the 30 minutes for non-agenda items, but we will be keeping time and we will be finishing after one hour. Anyone who does not have an opportunity to speak, please try to provide your statements that you wanted to say to the board in writing and you can submit them to the board clerk for our review. All comments are to be directed to the Board of Education. All comments are, will be reported by the board clerk. Neither the board nor the administration will be engaging in a dialogue or responding to questions concerning individual students or personnel matters. This is not an attempt to stifle public comment, but rather it's done to protect the privacy rights of the individuals involved. We encourage anyone who wishes to discuss a particular student or employee to contact the appropriate district staff member. If you are unclear as to whom you should contact, please see the board clerk at the end of this meeting. Handouts and or petitions are to be given only to the district clerk for distribution to the board. The board will receive and consider all written comments. Civility and mutual respect is expected. You may also write to the board in care of the district clerk at mlboxpo at necsd.net, that address is on the district website, or uh, provide a writing to New Bergen Large City School District at 124 Grant Street. Okay. Um, our first speaker, according to the date and timestamp, will be Kristen Gelhoff. Good evening. Um, my name is Kristen Gelhoff. I believe you stated you need my address. Is that correct? Yes, please. Um, My time starts on my address. My time starts giving my address. Could you please reset that? Well, then I will speak until I'm finished. Good evening, Mr. Pizzo, members of the Board of Education, parents, teachers, and neighbors. My name is Kristen Galhoff, and I respectfully come here tonight to speak about the budget crisis we find ourselves in. I have a lot invested in these schools. My three children are in your hands and my youngest in kindergarten this year. I would like to also mention I am a product of this district. I was your student, Mr. Pizzo, when you were at Meadow Hill School. I take great pride in saying I graduated from Newburgh, and the reason I was proud was because I was giving things to be proud of. Yet today I stand before you very unsure, heartbroken, scared out of my mind, angry, and ironically enough, empowered. As a student in NFA, I was given a very important gift from my 11th grade English teacher, Mr. Grove. He took an interest in my writing and in my desire to be a vessel of change and action in this world, and he encouraged me to not be the quiet girl in the back of the room, and he pushed me to publish my writing. He showed me that every voice has something worth saying, and my life was different after that experience. Mr. Grove gave me the chance to feel empowered, and I think of him in moments like these, and I wish I could have shared with him the impact his teaching had on my entire life's course. So here I stand in the very same building where I first learned that speaking up and using my voice has purpose in this world. Before I continue, let me speak personally for a moment. My second grade daughter was so excited when she started Meadow Hill because her language would be French. Ms. Hoffman, we would come to learn, is a fantastic professional and dedicated teacher. She comes to class every single day with an interactive, creative lesson plan, not just a worksheet. 
She teaches and engages and gets the kids active in their learning. She puts the global in the global explorations title of Mount Hill. However, this amazing gift that these children have enjoyed will now end. Madame Hoffman will have to tell her kids au revoir at the end of this year since she just learned her job is being cut. You have let go of a talented teacher and a loved program and to say she will be missed is an understatement. Then there's my son who just started playing viola in the fourth grade. He carries it with great pride and aspirations of playing for the rest of his life. When he heard that, he, that his music program faced cuts, he asked me, who would ever want to destroy the future of music? In those elementary schools sits the future. Should we enrich them or stifle them? I am using my voice tonight not just for myself. Tonight I speak for the many, many voices that I have been listening to for weeks regarding this budget. I have spent every day of the last two weeks answering emails, postings on Facebook, having chats in the supermarket, listening to my elderly neighbors, and with the amazing teachers and staff of this district. And there is one common theme among these voices. We want transparency. We want to know where our money is going and where it can be saved. We don't want an agency list of what you're willing to cut from. We want to see it all and know for sure it's being managed equitably. We have seen lots of cuts coming from elementary programs, from the arts and the music, and teachers and TAs. How is it we are not seeing comparable cuts to administration? Education. 
For the 2010-2011 school year, the Newburgh School, school District ranked 655th out of 682 school districts, including New York City districts. This is deplorable. The last thing we should do is take instructional personnel out of the classroom. Directory.org, the information is provided by the Education Resource Information Center, or ERIC. It states that kindergarten teaching assistants, quote, help in developing, organizing, and put into practice the daily program, end quote, with the head teacher. Along with that statement is printed a supplemental list 18 lines long of additional duties. Number one on that list is tutoring and assisting students, and that is also education. Furthermore, Eric did a study entitled Advantages of Having a Kindergarten, TA, a kindergarten Teacher's Assistant. They put TAs in three kindergarten classes in the school where TAs were not utilized, I'm sorry, in the past. They observed the class and students over a six week period. The findings were as follows. When a TA was present for six weeks, more small group instruction took place each child received more individual attention, the classroom ran better, students' language development increased, teachers had more time for student observations, and children could interact more often with each other. And that was only after six weeks. With kindergarten class size increasing yet again, this survey seems not only, sound, it not only sounds spot on, but makes a lot of common sense. At a point not too long ago, the Newburgh and Large School District agreed with many of these points. The aides would need to I'm sorry, become highly qualified New York State certified teaching assistants to help provide instruction while receiving ongoing extensive training. The district felt so strongly about this, in fact, that the Board of Ed offered to pay for and provide whatever we were lacking to our college degrees, mandated workshops and our New York State certification tests in 2003. Teaching assistants are not teachers as our salaries reflect. We are partners in education with teachers. We don't write lesson plans but we sure can implement them. And as teaching partners you do get a lot of bang for your buck as the average TA salary is $32,000 a year. This leads me back to the most important topic, the children. The youngest and special needs children should have as many highly qualified New York State certified instructional personnel in their classrooms as possible. As Ms. Buchek herself said, we need to work together. Yes, Ms. Buchek, we do. And if not for the children, then for whom? I'd like to strongly agree one more time with Ms. Buchek. You said, and I quote, we have to come together. We are here to educate the students of this district. I agree, and I hope the board keeps this statement in mind when voting where layoffs should have to be made. My final thought is to remind you that million dollar deficits are the mistakes of adults. Children's education should not be the currency by which they are paid. Thank you for your time. Children, as we all know, they face a plethora of challenges. The teachers 
in the classroom every day we work side by side and we do an enormous amount of work in that classroom. Um, you know now that we have inclusion children, which um, actually provides for autistic, bipolar, uh, autistic children, bipolar disorder, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome children, numerous cases of ADHD, ADD, and all kinds of um, let's say emotional and academic challenges in the classroom. Now, I think that common sense would dictate to anybody, not just you guys, but anybody, that you would never in a million years put the approximation of 30 children in a classroom with one teacher under the mandates of New York State with the guidelines that they have set for the educational purposes to come out and have these kids be prepared for the following grade and to pass all these levels of testing that we're giving them and ask the teacher to come out on the other side of this without having to retain children like we are doing by the carloads. These, we have so many kids that are being retained every year. And not to add to that, I'll add to that another thing. I don't know if anybody, any one of you or any one of us would like to be in that position where you're leaving these teachers who are now being evaluated 40% of their education, of their job, on the um, outcome of a student's education. That is really unbelievable that anybody up there would do that to any one of our, or our teachers in this district. To put 30 and, and beyond, we're looking at more than 30 students in the future to be in a classroom with our children, with our teachers, and to leave them alone is really a disgrace. It can't happen. It can't because you can't expect them to come out with the education that we that they deserve. They deserve an education, and they also deserve your support in that. And they deserve New York State has set all kinds of guidelines and mandates for these kids. And if you think any one of you would like to be in that position, I would love for you to, to give it a shot, really. Because I don't think any one of us could do it alone. Yeah. Okay. New York State, and that's what I want to dictate that it's extremely important to give small group and differentiated instruction to all of our students. You know now that inclusion is, leaves children in the least restrictive environment, which includes a lot of children with a lot of challenges. And in first grade, you already cut half the TAs last year. We are already struggling running back and forth. Running back and forth servicing two children, 60 kids. And we are doing our, we are doing our job to try to make that happen for them. But I, I don't know whether um, you guys look in the same uh, studies as we are, but the National Educational Association, which is something that we all, we all get those magazines in the mail. But I did some research myself too. And they have said that there's some very serious recommendations that they're, they're leading to us that um, says to, clo to close the achievement gap, especially for inner city schools, they really suggest that there be 15 children in a classroom. Now I know that that's impossible, but, you, but now I'm saying, and if it's the ESL and inclusion children in there, there should be less than that. And we know that's impossible, so you did the next best thing years ago by putting very highly qualified teaching assistants along with the teacher to help change that ratio. That ratio is what's making a difference. You cannot have 30 kids or 32 in a classroom and expect results. And you guys are responsible for making that decision. You are responsible, all of you, to make a decision based on the well-being of our students. And the other thing I would like to say is that if we don't lose, we lose them in kindergarten first, those are the two years where all of their issues, their behavioral issues start, their emotional issues start, and then all the learning, academic, both math and phonics and reading. If they don't get it there, it is a domino effect that affects them for the rest of their lives. <laughs> now, let's leave you with one quick message, and that is, just as in war, as in education, when you need to have results, you do not cut your forward line. You, you start from the top. You don't cut your forward line. <laughs> State School Music Association for the Hudson Valley. I also live in Newburgh, right behind Foster Town Elementary. My daughter is only two and a half, but I'm terrified for the future of the music program here in Newburgh. Music is important to Newburgh. Music is a necessity to Newburgh. When we moved to Saratoga seven years ago, to poorly paraphrase Julie Andrews, the street was alive with the sound of music. Three members of the West Point Band lived on our street. 
from the music in the air, from them giving lessons, to the little girl across the street practicing her violin, to the boy around the corner practicing his trumpet. It was evident that music was important to Newberg. What do we now say to the girl across the street who may no longer play her violin? Or about the boy around the corner and his trumpet? What about the hundreds of third graders that have been waiting and waiting for those instrument selection sheets to come home in a few weeks? We had four band and orchestra students from Newburgh that played the elementary all county band and orchestra this year. That's from 56 schools in 16 districts in all over Orange County. Where will the representation from Newburgh be next year? Or how about the 211 students that played the all district concert? Which one of you will be willing to call their parents to tell them that they cannot participate next year? And what do I tell my own daughter why she isn't allowed to play the flute when she is ready? The music teachers in Newburgh are some of the most dedicated music teachers in the county. These aren't frustrated musicians that are stuck teaching in Newburgh. These are teachers that are proud to work in Newburgh. They have dedicated their lives to our students and our community to give them one of the most valuable gifts that you can give a child, the love of music. Who's heard of the Valley Central Orchestra? Well, the per Port Jervis Community Band. No one, because they don't exist. But Newburgh has its own symphony orchestra. And where do they play? Right here in this wonderful auditorium. Music is one of the most cost-effective use of teacher FTEs. Now we're talking money. Junior high and high school band orchestras and orchestras often have 40 to 80 students in a class. How many English teachers have that many kids with one teacher? In addition to lost teaching jobs, the students no longer have these music programs. Well, they have to go somewhere. They have to be taught by someone else. If period seven band doesn't exist, they're either in a study hall or they're somewhere, and it has to be taught by somebody. Research shows that pull-out music programs do not have a negative do not have a negative effect on achievement. Students in music performing groups actually score higher on standardized tests at all levels. In the age of race to the top and the importance of standardized testing, can Newburgh afford to throw away a cost-effective music program which promotes student success? A program that provides social protection factors for average students. A 1993 study published by the Journal of Research and Music Education, the author found that more music teachers are role models for minority students than teachers in any other subject. 36% of surveyed minority students identified their music teacher as a role model, compared to 28% English teachers, 11% elementary, and 7% physical education. The same way that we rely on music to, to express our culture and unify our society, Music holds the same power in the school community. Music's impact on overall student development is very positive. Auditory, perceptual, aesthetic, work ethic, both immediate response and long-range response. Sometimes in the world of APPR, RTTT, and PLOs, we forgot that the, forget that the human brain has two sides. If we continue to cut the arts, when do the students get to exercise their right side of the brain? When during the day do they get a chance to express their thoughts and feelings through a form other than writing? Whether it's through drawing or painting or playing a musical instrument, we have the vital job of providing all children, not just the children that race to the top or the professional educators, most of them which have not been in the classroom, as state ed says we should. Why would we want to just require the state minimums? I'd just like to leave with a short quote from Albert Einstein. I often think in music, I live my daydreams in music. I see my life in terms of music. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for Next, we'll hear from Mary Jo Vieira. Good evening. My name is Mary Jo Vieira and I'm a first grade teaching assistant at Temple Hill Academy. As you already know, our district has been in jeopardy of failing for many reasons and in many ways. Tonight, the decisions that you make will either hasten or lessen that eventuality. We are talking about our 2,000 kindergarten and first grade students. Over the last year, our joint intervention team has proposed several interventions to improve the test scores of our children. First and foremost, 
don't cut teaching resources in the classroom. It is also necessary that in order to implement any of the suggested interventions that we have the district's full support and commitment to those endeavors. Over the last several years, teaching assistants have become highly qualified, certified by New York State, and extensively trained by the district. This would include response to intervention, RTI, 600 pages, three college courses in early childhood literacy, state assessments, dibbles, handwriting without tears, six plus one writing traits, guided reeling strategies for low level students, math strategies, team teaching, differentiated and small group instruction, common core standards, scribing, etc., etc., etc. Last year, this district voted to eliminate half of the first grade teaching assistants. Already, the lack of personal instruction to the lower level instructor, as well as discipline, have all been compromised, and we have left the high risk students without the daily additional help they deserve. It is extremely unrealistic to expect better results in this district and less educators in the younger grades. Do you think even the most qualified teacher left alone in a classroom with 30 challenging little children will be able to offer anywhere near the aggressive curriculum that is expected of them? This is already a challenge with two of us in the classroom. What kind of results can we expect? Let's be real. If we don't get the job done in kindergarten and first grade, they will struggle for the remainder of their academic years. Thank you.
classified students only went down by 2%. I think there's something wrong with this picture. Totally right now, we have 1,575 uh, children classified under special education, and that's only between 4 and 21. Of those, that's 14% of our students are classified under special ed. Of those 1,575, we have at least 300 additional children who are classified under preschool. And I know we don't really pay for the preschool programs, but those children eventually end up enrolling in a kindergarten program. All right, outside of the district, we work with at least 53 other programs within outside of the school district where we send children out because we do not provide the programs within the school district. And I understand that there's a plan to bring back at least six more classes, which I really commend the district on that. This is something we've been asking for in special education for many years, and it's finally going to come to fruition, and I'm very, very happy about that. And I'm looking forward to working on that with um, anybody who's interested. With, um, as, as in, in, in addition to that, we have uh, 111 students who are classified under 504. For those of you who don't know, there's certain students who do not qualify into special education who get a 504 plan. It's the American with Disabilities Act. We are also responsible for making sure that those students are evaluated. So that includes everything else. Right now, the district is proposing that um, we go do away with one psychologist and six social workers. Under RTI, we are required to provide services for students. We're provided to give counseling to students so that we don't classify children under special education. Some of the reasons why these children come in and we end up having to classify them is because they come from unfortunate situations. One example is the situation that happened just two weeks ago where we have one, stu one former student who was shot. Now he has brothers and sisters, he has cousins, he has um, um, other relatives that come into our school district and those children need to walk into our doors and be able to learn. Who is going to address those needs? It's not going to happen from outside the school district. I know we're not a social agency, but we have a lot of social problems. And then on top of that, they decided, you know, 15 months ago, they decided we were going to hire an executive director. The executive director took the part to, to try to all reorganize our district. And in, in his plan, he also did fix a lot of the things that we needed to have fixed within our school district. And now I understand that that is something else that's going to be cut. Right now, I understand that we also have um, how many administrators at the high school for 3,000 plus students. And yet we have one, we're proposing to have one director of special education. Meanwhile, we have 1,575 students classified under special education. It just makes no sense to me. We really do need some type of leadership for that. that data and statistics to the board clerk? Oh, sure. Or is that part of, I don't, I didn't see it in the package, we just looked quickly, but so if it's not in the package that you provided, if you could provide that data and statistics, uh, then she can make copies and, and provide it to everyone. Right, this is when the packet I gave you. What I showed you was what an IEP looked like about 15 years ago. The second IEP that you're looking at is what we're required to do now by the new state mandates. The IEP is twice as long. Our clerical staff needs to take care of these projects. And we need to help our people to do that. Thank you. Next we'll hear from Jesse Dennis. for two years and the crew team for five years and I'm a student at the main campus. Crew is a very rewarding sport to everyone involved because it pushes you to your limits and brings everyone close together. To me, crew has had a huge impact on my life and I know I can speak for everyone on the team when I say that. I, it made me stronger both mentally and physically than I ever thought were possible. When I set a goal for myself and I reach it, it gives me the desire to keep going, as well as a great sense of satisfaction. 
In my five years of growing, I have met so many amazing people who helped make me who I am today. On the crew team, everyone in grades 7 to 12 is given the same respect and of older students act as guides to younger, not as bosses. After being both a varsity team and a rowing club racer, I can tell the difference between co the competitive feeling in a varsity race versus a club race. I joined crew in the seventh grade because I had tried so many other sports and never really succeeded or fit in at any of them. Crew takes people of all shapes, sizes, ability levels, and backgrounds. No one sits out unless you're injured and everyone races. Since I started, I come to see that no matter if you're a girl or a boy, you're treated as an equal, which is an important lesson to learn as a young girl in today's society. Additionally, I've learned the difference between the time to have fun and the time to be serious. If I'm having a bad day at school, going to practice on the water with my boat can instantly turn my whole day around. Crew teaches its members responsibility, teamwork, and perseverance. When you get to the race site, you have to get with your boat and put it together to be safe and effective. Then you have to work together in order to push the boat forward. And after that, you still have to get that several hundred pound boat out and take it all apart again. Success cannot be achieved by oneself or without hard work and determination in the sport. And my teammates and I exemplify this on a daily basis. In crew, you don't put away your boat and call it a day. It involves hard work to maintain the boat and your body's condition to make sure everything works properly. I love the thought of accomplishing goals set out for me by both my coaches and myself. Crew is so important to me, and I don't know what I would do if they cut it for my last year, which is the crucial time to show college coaches what I can do. Recently, I visited many Division I and II colleges that offer crew teams, and they have shown more pride in their rowing than any of their other teams. The coaches I have visited have showed interest in me, and if I can't row competitively in my senior year of high school, that interest will probably drop. Many past members have gone on and succeeded in college rowing, and I hope to do so as well. Please consider requiring all athletic teams to take a small cut to their budget, rather than just cutting entire teams. on how they could cut the crew budget by 4%. Surely all other teams could be cut by 4% and survive perfectly fine. One final thought, when a family needs to tighten their budget somehow, they don't just decide to kick out one or two of their kids. <laughs> experiences with the crew team and why I would like to see it continue after this year. When I was 15, I was concerned about the path some of my friends were taking and I was looking for something positive and a friend of mine who was on the crew team told me about the rowing club. I was skeptical at first because I wasn't really into sports. Uh, it was definitely challenging, but in time I found that I was able to meet the challenge and I found something I liked and could possibly be good at. I have come to realize that rowing is not a solitary sport. I have learned that I am part of a team and I am committed to working with my crew. The coaches that have worked with me have instilled that commitment in me. The lessons I have learned will serve me well in the future, in work, in college, and life in general. Me being a senior, I know the team will be here for me until I graduate. So I am clearly not speaking for myself, but the kids who come after me. I hope they will have the same opportunities that I have been fortunate to experience 
The possible decision to cut the crew team has brought us closer as a team, and we are doing all we can to ensure that doesn't happen. <laughs> because as Coach Kenny says, if you're not doing something, then you're doing nothing. I thank you for allowing me to speak this evening for the entire crew team, and I hope you will vote to continue funding the crew team. And as Jesse said, keep it in the NFA family. Good evening, my name is Keith Schaefer. Uh, tonight I'm here representing the NFA crew team in, to me, three capacities. As a 22-year resident and 16-year employee of the school system, as a parent of three children who collectively have accrued 11 years as members of the crew team, and as a current assistant coach of this, crew, this year's crew team. As an employee, I see the positive role that all varsity sports have on its participants to get into shape, to stay fit, to maintain grades, to be involved in athletics, and to be involved in something that's larger than themselves. The ultimate payoff for all teams is to win. That's as high as it gets, and our crew team wins every year. Our success every year brings a desire to belong, which in turn fuels the longevity of our team. That is why so many students continue to try out and so many desire to remain. Last year alone, we had 100 students at our initial meeting, of which they were vying for 70 slots on last year's team. This year, we have 73 rowers on this team. The upside is apparent, all three of my children have been involved on this team. The positive impact that I've seen from all three of them is the fact that my oldest, now a graduate of NFA, attends University of Connecticut and enrolls currently for their men's crew team. My middle son, Connor, is currently a junior at NFA. He was at Oxy and our role for the past four years. His future interest of being a naval architect stems directly from his work down at the boathouse. My daughter, currently an eighth grader at Heritage Junior High Middle School, my apologies, um, couldn't wait for this school year to begin. She has such a positive impact on last year's team, it, 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 it was amazing to me. She dropped dance, she's dropping cheerleading, she wants to be a rower. That says that she wants to be um, The season starts long before the first practice began. Um, volunteer parents, potential rowers, have been down at the boathouse since February. Um, they've been rigging boats, repairing crew shells, reconditioning motorboat engines, assembling dock pieces to put them all into the water so that we as a team can get on the water and do our business of rowing. Um, there's much to be done regardless. My role this year has changed to become an assistant coach. I've been a parental volunteer and somebody filled into my shoes. As a current coach of the team and past volunteer of the team, the NFA crew team to me is by far the best dollar value that this district spends on any sports team within the district. We are one team that's comprised of grades 7th grade through 12th graders. It's comprised of modified JV and varsity rowers. And every single meet, every rower rows. Every child competes. There's no child standing on the sidelines, nobody waiting to participate, nobody practicing all week long, knowing that they're not gonna have a chance to get in to compete against other teams and other rowers. They're all involved at every single meet. And to me, that's the best dollar that I could possibly have to answer. Now, I almost lost my place. <laughs> um, just for our sake, this year's team, we're talking about saving money. We as coaches have already determined we're going to cut at least two meets out of our season this year. Minimum. Next year, we'll do exactly the same thing, if not more. All we're asking of you as a board is do not cut our team. We will cut. We will cut back on our dollar spending. This year you claim, which is fine, we spent $46,000.
That's what would save the district. We're telling you, fine. We have no problem with cutting from our budget. You tell us what we need to cut, and we will cut back. That's fine. We, we, we don't want to be isolated and singled out. Either we're cut from the school district. I lost my place. I apologize. Um, anyway, we, we don't want to lose out on the opportunities that all of our students have. District-wide. All school sports are important, whether it's crew, hockey, the ski team. Please try to keep them all in camp. You've all been to high school sporting events. I doubt highly you've ever been to a crew team. I know at least uh, two of you, yes, somebody raised their hand, have been to a crew meet. Please, I implore you, come down, see what crew is all about. You will come to appreciate us as a sport, and you all are all here for to represent. Thank you very much for your students on this 
understand the patience and hard work that it takes to become a good grower, while learning how to maintain the equipment and infrastructure that is required in this sport. The passion for rowing in Newburgh does not disappear after graduation. Many of these students hope to continue with this sport at college level, and they will maintain a level of rowing into adulthood. In fact, a group of former NFA crew members have recently graduated from college with teaching degrees and are looking forward to the future of coaching with this team. They understand the importance that the NFA crew team has made in their lives, and they want to continue the 20-year tradition of crew at NFA and the 150-year tradition of competitive rowing in Newburgh, in the city of Newburgh. People don't realize the history of rowing. Newburgh is the center of rowing, modern rowing in the United States, not Boston, not up in Canada. The rowing that started, that's done in Henley in uh, England and up in uh, Boston started out here in Newburgh. Examine the reasons for your votes against the NFA crew team and find a way to continue this program into the future. I understand that budget cuts must be made, but they should be spread among all of the teams and clubs and not targeted at this one popular sport. NFA crew is clearly a high school team that leads at the city of Newburgh and the surrounding towns and emphasizes the proud history of the community. Thank you. Sylvia Santiago. schools 
that are incredibly important in the decisions for the uh, enrollment decisions for the students of this district as they go seeking uh, uh, enrollment at higher education institutions across, across the world. And I think that's really important. And I have to tell you, while I applaud the athletics across the board, and I do subscribe to the principle of family, that every sport has its importance. There are very few high schools who have one of the great rivers in the world at their course. those things that make this place special, and there are many of them, and it starts with the human capital that is here represented in this room, but it's also predicated on the historically significant ge uh, geographical resources here. And I ask you, if there is not one special place in this region that's not anchored to this river, and there's not a special sport whose very history is anchored to that river that's worthy of consideration, that it, then, then I would say, get rid of growth. But you can't. I don't think you can step back and look at the special attributes for the district for which you serve as guardians and not pay special attention about every possible way that you can keep what's special about Newburgh front and center for the benefit of all its residents. So I salute you in the very difficult challenge that you have before you. It's impossible to separate all the voices uh, in a line item uh, approach, but I would encourage you simply to think about what makes this place as special as, as it can be and has been and will be in the future. And I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brackett. Sheila Manning. Being told we have six minutes total left. <coughs> Shelly Manning, Newburgh Teaching Assistant Chapter Chairperson. Uh, to the Board of Education, uh, why are we here? To make sure the students of this district get the best education possible. Our job title is to do all teaching assistance. We assist in the teaching of the children. We do our IPI intervention, physical testing, ELA, and math groups. I could use the rest of my five minutes by just describing what teaching assistants do. Teaching assistants and teachers in kindergarten and first grade are help, helping build a strong educational foundation during the current years of a child's education. The Board of Ed has repeatedly stated that your intentions are to stay as far away from the classroom as possible. Yet your cuts are to teaching assistants and teachers who are at the front line of education. During difficult economic times, everyone tightens their belts by doing without unnecessary things. We can be more frugal in using supplies that we already have. Is it necessary to change and purchase new programs every year? The board made an initiative by cutting 20% of the district wide supply line. You should continue in that direction by increasing the cuts to materials, not people. The board also stated they wanted the cuts to be spread out so they are fair and equal. How is it fair and equal when last year over 20% of teaching assistants were laid off, while the other groups in the district will have fewer than 10%? That trend seems to be continuing this year. It is our hope that the board finds ways to reverse this trend by restoring teaching assistant positions. The future of our children and communities will be determined by the decisions you make today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miriam Arroyo. Thank you. 
William Arroyo, 20 Lenape Road, Newark, New York. Um, dear members of the board, superintendents of the Newark City School District, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm an attendance aide at MFMA campus. I am speaking on behalf of the attendance interventions for the dropout prevention. Just for clarification, this is the job, the attendance aides, which is not the job of the part-time attendance callers. Just a little history. In 1997, the Newark School District was in the eye of the state as they considered the districts in need of. Due to the poor scores in English and math, as well as the dropout rate was too high, poor record keeping, and no accountability from the district. This was due to not being able to prove that interventions were done to prevent this dropout rate. This led the district to be placed by the state in what was called the service. In 1998, the district, and to satisfy the state's demand, added several attendance aid positions to do attendance and dropout prevention. These aids were to do these interventions for the academic success of the students, as well as to get off the service. I think Mr. Russell Lewis may recall those days. With this in mind, I want to remind all of you how non-attendance to school affect the school findings from the state. In the year 2004, the Assistant Superintendent of Operations at the time, Dr. Kate Farrell, decided to dissolve the attendance intervention staff positions across the district. She successfully eliminated the attendance aid positions with the exception of the three high school attendance aides. All in all, because Mr. Pope Peter Coppoletti, then principal of NFA, requested to keep them because he realized the importance of these interventions made by the attendance aides and their job-related duties that led to the academic success of the students as well as the funding of the state. In August 2009, four years later, the district reinstated three attendance aid positions for the junior high school level. Mr. Sean Wright, and I have his permission to speak on behalf of his, his name, Sean Corright, of one of the rehired attendance aides asked during the interview with Mr. Pizzo and Mr. McLemore, why are you rehiring for the position you have eliminated? Their answer was, we made a mistake and should have never let it go as we needed someone in the attendance. A month later, September 2009, a meeting was held with Mr. Pizzo and Mr. Fitzgerald at NFA High School main campus with the attendance aides. I was there. We were informed during that meeting that by both of them that the state looks for the results of the English and math components, but they now added a new component, and this was attendance. They both claimed that our jobs were very important for the record keeping, interventions, and prevention of the dropout rate. It is why I now ask you, Mr. Pizzo, and everyone in the panel, how is it less important two and a half years later the attendance aides job for what they stated then? Members of the board, we the attendance aides feel you do not have the complete knowledge of what job entails. And it's important to keep these interventions as well as the record keeping that they do. They do help with the dropout rate to be decreased and the state funding to be increased. Therefore, the high school level full attendance submitted to you on Friday um, a job duties as well as some, um, and I just presented more past students that graduated, that successfully graduated, and testified on their on our behalf what a job meant to them with their success, the academic success. So I will leave you quickly with one, with three simple questions. Do you think it could be a disservice to the students as well as jeopardizing the funding of the state? if you eliminate the states? Are you prepared to say a second time around that a mistake was repeated and you went back to the service? And lastly, where is the best interest of the students and shouldn't this be your major concern? Thank you for your time.
Those of you that did not get an opportunity to speak, I encourage you to submit in writing what you intended to say here this evening to the board clerk. We, I would like you also to know that we continue to receive and review your emails that you're sending in with suggestions around the budget. I encourage you to continue doing that. We are taking them into consideration while working within the constraints of work budget. I thank all of you for coming this evening, for participating. I would especially like to thank the students for their participation in this process. We need to hear from you. We need to hear your thoughts and your opinions as this directly affects you as students here in our district. I'd also like to thank each and every one of you for your conduct here tonight and the respect that you have given to everyone in this auditorium. I'd also like to make you aware that the next budget workshop will be held on Thursday, March 29th at 6 p.m. at Temple Hill Academy. We will have a guest speaker that evening, Mr. David Little, who is the Director of Governmental Relations for New York State School Boards Association, will be speaking to us and to the community in regards to the fiscal crisis facing us with this year's school district budgets. He will have a short question and answer session just for Mr. Little. I thank you all for attending this We can get them well out. We have resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purposes. To review the employment history of particular individuals and to discuss collective negotiations under the Taylor Law. The board may take further action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Roll call, please. Yes, thank you. Table. Resolutions 032712P and 032712Q. And I have a motion to remove those two resolutions from the table. Hello. Second. Roll call. Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Burkhardt? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Vansley? Yes. Mr. Butcher? Yes. Resolution P is to abolish a full-time food service helper position and create a full-time cook position. No effect on the general fund. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. 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 Resolution Q is to approve the change of status of Susan Boyer from a food service helper to a full-time probationary appointment as a cook at Newburgh Free Academy <coughs> main campus. May I have a motion? So move. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. 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 Mr. Bensley? Yes. Yes. Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose, to review employment history of particular individuals. The board will not be taking action after the executive session. I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Pavinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. 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 Yes. Mr.